I studied in Hyderabad. I'm a born and brought up Pakka Hyderabadi person, Sikandrabadi, if I have to go into specifics. Studied at uh, St. Anne's Sikandrabad and uh, uh, pretty boring school life. We have nuns around you, what's going to happen? No boys in my school. So <laughs> after that, uh, uh, you know, I was thinking of, uh, you know, those days you could either become a doctor or an engineer or a teacher. There, was, there were not too many options other than that. So I didn't much care for math. So I thought, what the heck? Doctor's profession looked glamorous enough, wear the white coat, the steth looks good, let's go do that. So I took BPC to study. Then one day while having a conversation with somebody, I realized you have to study five years and then you just get to MBBS. And then you got to study more and some more and some more. I said to hell with that, I'm not writing my MBBS sentence. So that went out of the window. So I was those typically confused kids who really didn't know what to do at what point of time. They were friends of mine who wanted to be doctors and they are very successful doctors today. So, you know, I was one of those who kind of every few months had one new idea about what to do. So every time I bump into one kid, I said, it's okay, <laughs> no problem. So, but the thing that helped me is I knew what I didn't want to do. So my entire life was about cancelling out things that I didn't want to do. No, okay, I don't want to do math, so I did this. I don't want to study so long, so I didn't do MBS. So what was the next thing? So this was very crucial in deciding my next uh, campus where I studied was the canteen. I'm a big foodie. So in Hyderabad, the best canteen in those days used to be in women's college. So I said, okay, it has a canteen and it had a cricket ground. Two things that I loved doing, playing cricket and having a good meal in the canteen. So off to women's. So then in women's college, one day, like at one of these events, Kiran Bedi happened to come. And uh, she was so powerful the way she spoke and she was a tiny little lady, but like a ball of dynamite. And I said, damn, that looks so good. The uniform and the way she spoke. I said, uh, I think, you know, that's what I should do. I should become an IPS officer. So all my friends were like, yeah, you're 5'9", you look damn good in the uniform. That's the level of conversation that used to happen. No more depth to that. So I said, chalo, now I'm going to become IAS officer. So then somebody said, then you should go study in JNU, New Delhi. Nevertheless, reach JNU and uh, those were days without mobile phones. So first whole month I was a mess, I was crying, new place, new language, didn't know anything, you couldn't call home frequently enough, uh, you had to stand in you know 45 minute one hour queues, but then slowly, JNU is like a creature, it just grows onto you. And then once you become a JNUite, you are never anything else, you're a different organism, you're a different creature after that. We had some wonderful professors, studied. And then did the typical thing, you, go, you have these amazing bookshops in JNU where you go and buy these big, big books to prep for IS. And then everybody is giving you gyan, study for, you know, put one timetable. Morning to this many hours you study, you read the newspaper for so many hours, then you study this for so many hours. So you are clocking some, you know, eight hours of studies apart from your regular thing. So one month. I sincerely thought, because I kept thinking of myself in an IPS officer's uniform. By after one month, and we had some conversations about how the bureaucracy works and all. Genius, you have, you have very animated debates and all, when you're having lunch and things like that. Then I started to figure out, I can't see myself behind a desk. I can't see myself in a bureaucrat's role. I can't see myself seeing some minister and getting up and doing so. I said, what am I kind of pushing myself into? Still no idea what I'm going to do because my mom's thinking I'm studying for the civils. I didn't. Got out of JNU. Everybody's prepping for uh, post-graduation. I got into the London School of Economics, but then decided academics is not my thing. So as you can see, complete mess career planning wise. Then I thought, okay, let me just go back to Hyderabad. I need some time out. Came back to Hyderabad and uh, six months I was at home. 
and uh, one day i was just bumming around you know what happens once you're back from college you're not doing anything you sleep late wake up late you're not you're just lazing about the house i was just going through some newspaper or something my mother came took the newspaper said get out of the house i was like what she said it's been 6 months since you've come back you have no career plan you have no clue what you're doing get out go find a job i said what the hell of course i can find a job i'm a post graduate from jnu so i used to write fairly well so i thought i'd go and you know write copy for some ad agency or something and uh, i went and i met somebody at mudra and uh, i just walked in and i said i need a job and this 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 and that man said you can't just walk in and ask for a job as a copywriter we have a certain way to go about it you have to write an exam and this and that and he said write something and bring it to me i said what he said write anything about journey of a caterpillar from charminar to banjara hills i don't care just write something so finally i went wrote some copy gave it to him he said look you do have some creative talent but you need to understand that there's a process so he gave me a whole bunch of books to read on advertising and stuff like that so i while i was prepping about joining an ad agency later one family friend came and told us uh, why don't you go and uh, assist on a film so when he said cinema i had no clue uh, i didn't know what assistant directors did i had no clue what directors did and uh, he said this this friend of mine called gunang gangraju why don't you go meet him and uh, you know you can work with him so i went and i walked into this big hall and they were two huge almaras of books i have always been a big bookworm so the minute i saw those books i first thought okay this is a place i can survive in because if i don't find anybody to talk to i can read a book so i started going and looking through those books then mr gangraj came and he had a chat with me for about 2 hours generally asking me what films i like what do i like about cinema i have no clue to this date what i told him but uh, uh the poor man was patient enough to indulge me and end of it he said look it's my first film so i don't know what i'm going to teach you but uh, you know maybe we'll learn together so hop along so they were shooting this film called little soldiers and uh, i used to live in secunderabad and this was near pedamagudi so i used to go all the way to pedamagudi on one little scooty that i had and we started shooting i had no clue that at that point there were literally zero women technicians in the industry there was nobody it was it was very weird to see women on the set in the sense there would be a hairdresser or there would be a choreographer so then uh, little soldiers didn't do too well so again i was out of a job uh, because gangraj gar was not doing his next film immediately so i didn't know how to approach people for work because uh, the film industry is not a very structured organization you can't put a resume and go and put in a job and say it doesn't work that way two you know it was very weird for a woman to come and wa- ask for work in an office they didn't expect you they thought you, you know you'd probably be seen as a makeup person so um, i met uh, rasul was my dop on uh, little soldiers and he was also working on krishnavamsi's gulabi and at that time when gulabi released i saw it and i thought it was the most phenomenal film i'd seen you know very current and my age and this is what people my age would were fascinated by so i said i want to work with krishna vamsi so rasul spoke to him so from that's the time i actually started working on mainstream cinema so to say and chandraleka was the film and it was a set uh, on in anapurna and it had to be a hospital set so they put me in charge of the art department so pk trangara was the director so i was like one super over enthusiastic bunny so uh, chandraleka happened and um, after that you know uh, i became a good core part of vamshi's team and uh, few films passed so then many years later vamshi one day said what the hell don't you want to go and make your own film and that's when i got out of my comfort zone because it is easy being around vamshi you you don't have to, there's no pressure on you you just have to work crazy as hell um and then i started my trials to make a film 
got scripts written and it was happening and happening and happening and six years later, nothing is happening. One day, Kalyan Koduri, who eventually became the music director of uh, Alamut Lahindi, called me and he said, uh, I need you to meet a producer. And it was a Sunday. I had my, you know, a lot of people can't sl sleep when they're stressed. I sleep like a like a dog when I'm stressed. I just, I can just sleep like that. So, blessed that way. So, I was sleeping. I said, I'm not getting up. I'm not telling anybody any stories. I'm fed up. He said, boss, you just have to go across the street. The producer lives just across the road. I will come and pick you up. I said, Kalyan, I'm done to death with this. I can't do this dance again. He said, no, for my sake, please, I'll come and pick you up and literally pestered me. So, I woke up. Showered, got ready, Kalyan came, picked me up and took me to this man called Damodar Prasad. I said, who is this guy? Has he made any films? He said, no, he's not made any films, but his father has made. So, I'm just sitting and raising my eyebrows at Kalyan. He said, please, now we've come here, just narrate the script. So, Damu, Dam, Damugaru eventually became the producer of Ala Modlaindi, actually sits with one very poker face like this. So, I am narrating Ala Modlandi, which is supposed to be a very funny story and he is listening like this. So, imagine having to narrate that and I am glaring at Kalyan intermittently and he is like... So, then I finished the first half narration, then he just got up, got up, turned out and went to the balcony, didn't say anything to me. And I am like, dude, what is this? And he is smoking. I am like, what the hell? He said, no, 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 just wait. Then. He came back, heard the rest of the story and I am pretty much expecting, okay, you know, we will think about it and call you back and he said, Amma, we are doing this film. I was like, what? <laughs> so much later I came to know that in the interval itself he decided that he is going to do the film and Damugaru till date listens to stories like that only. So then, that is how Alamulla Indi started. Little did I know what lay ahead for me. It was a two year arduous journey to make the film. Because Damugaru had faced so many sets of failures in his journey to becoming a producer. They were, he had put one set of people around him as advisors. One of them was one senior director. I will not name him out of respect. And uh, he was supposed to be the creative head of the film. And that man and me were on completely different pages because Allah Mullahindi, when it came, was like no other Telugu film of its time. It was, it was a different grammar. See, films are like this, okay? It's, I am making something to my taste. Either you will go wow or you will go what the hell is this? But I can only make what is to my taste. So, I was just hoping and praying that people would like it. So, we are shooting Ala Modlaindi and uh, this man is constantly like, you know, uh, the first schedule is done and uh, my grandfather's brother had passed away, I was at the funeral. I get a call from Vivek Garo, who is the executive producer. He says, uh, the editor has seen the rush, he is very upset. So, please come and meet. So, that 10 minute drive from Chutneys to the office was like hell. Imagine waiting all this while and then getting the news that they think your film is shit. So, I literally saw in those 10 minutes like, okay, you are no good, you are not good enough to be a director. So, I am quickly running in my head, what do I do? My brother runs a restaurant business, should I join him? What are my other career options after so long? All this thing is happening in my head. And then I reached there and they said, this is absolute crap. This, 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 this. So, I just listen. I mean, every film depends upon response. If people don't respond positively, there's nothing you can do. You've just done what you've done. This continued till Nitya Menon came for the second schedule. And Nitya was an absolute firebrand. She was 21. She got out of Manipal University. And she was the bravest person I knew. I mean, that kid taught me so much, it was, yeah, I'll, I will tell you. So, she came and uh, I said, uh, Nitya, they are saying this is not working, can you just take a look at the rush? So, I remember her, she was sitting on a bean bag and she was watching whatever footage we had edited and she was laughing. 
and I was, it was so perplexing for me because till then people would just walk into my edit room and then kind of do that and then walk out and then they would have a group discussion. So I'm standing somewhere there like an untouchable person trying to wonder what are they talking and two or three of my ADs next to me and then some serious discussion is happening like you had made some shit. So then Nitya is laughing and I said, what? I mean, she said, dude, this is the story you told me. What are they talking about? I said, are you sure it's working? She said, yeah, it's working. What do they want? Then, okay, now how to complete the film? I have to complete the film. That was the first time I actually stood up for myself. And finally, when Allah Murlaindi got made and got released, it got released because the producers had another film and they managed to sell this for satellite because you could get one crore satellite those days and Allah Murlaindi was made on a budget of two crores. So my executive producer said, look, if you stall the film, you lose one crore. If you release it also, you are only risking one crore. So why ruin someone's career? I am telling you today, even after the film was complete, they did not believe it worked. It was shown to so many directors, so many big directors, people in the industry, and people just thought it was crap. So finally, Alam Adlaindi got released, and uh, it started with very small word of mouth, and by the evening shows, the shows were getting full. And Nani said, let's just go to the RTC Crossroads and watch the film. And I went to Malikajan, I think it was. And we stood there and I saw a screen full of thousand people just laughing and moving to every single thing that we had created and written there. And I just had tears gushing through my eyes. I was just standing there and there were just tears running through my eyes. And I can tell you, today that was the greatest moment of my life. So that was it and today I am here making my fifth film, it's going to be out in December and I can tell you I am really really enjoying what I am doing ever since I have removed that fear from what I am doing. So yeah, I have been asked to rap so <laughs> sorry about that but uh, yeah, thank you once again for having me here and all I can tell you guys is whatever you do, fully enjoy what you do, you don't have to get to 40 to realize that. Start doing it now, you know, before your petrol tank gets to half. Start enjoying every single thing and it's okay to make mistakes. Chalamgaru annaru padte kotta gotullo padmanar means make new mistakes. Mistakes are your best friend. Don't be afraid of making a mistake. But make amazing mistakes because they'll teach you brilliant stuff. Don't make the same mistake again, that's all. Right, thank you so much.